Just six years after the creation of the Galactic Empire, in the year 13 BBY, Emperor Sheev Palpatine begins the top-secret advanced weapons research program on the remote planet Dandoran called Project Blackwing. Palpatine, who was also the Sith Master, Darth Sidious, was obsessed with immortality and began Blackwing as a means of researching ways of reviving dead necrotic tissue. Using both alchemy and science, Sith scientists hired by Palpatine accidentally created the Black Wing Virus, also known as the Sickness. Originally an experiment to achieve immortality, the Sickness was an infectious viral agent, one that upon entering the host's body, kills its host and animates the corpse, though quickly eating away at all the living tissue, causing it to deteriorate, becoming a literal zombie. When the virus was first created, it infected its test subject and spread to a few troops at the research center. Though the problem was contained then and there, Emperor Palpatine himself fittingly dubbed the Death Troopers of Imperial Intelligence after these undead troops. Besides attacking living tissue, the virus also seemed to communicate with itself, like a sort of hive mind, learning from its various hosts and sharing knowledge of skills between bodies, such as the piloting of starships and the use of blasters. Understanding the potential value this biological weapon could hold, Palpatine ordered further research in secret on Dandoran. At some point, over a decade later, between the battles of Yavin and Hoth, an outbreak of the Blackwing virus happened at the same facility on Dandoran, this time spreading to many stormtroopers stationed on the planet, creating an army of the dead, threatening to infect the entire galaxy. Efforts were taken by both the Rebel Alliance and the Empire to contain and neutralize the threat before it got out of hand, and though eventually they were successful in their individual operations, rumors started to circulate that several criminal gangs and cartels managed to make away with some samples of the Blackwing virus in the aftermath of the skirmish, leaving the galaxy with a slightly paranoid anticipation of a future outbreak. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Star Bazaar. We have only a week and a half before General Grievous is released in Battlefront 2, and I can definitely feel the hype ramping up. Besides Grievous though, Halloween, my favorite holiday, is also almost upon us. And in honor of it, in this video, I am going to go over why I think Star Wars Battlefront 2 needs an offline zombies mode, one I would fittingly call Army of the Dead. Let's take a trip back to your first experience playing zombies in Call of Duty. Remember that tension, that excitement, that fear of the undead slowly moving toward you? Now imagine that, but in the universe of Star Wars. As a diehard fan of this franchise, I know I would lose my collective shit if they brought zombies into Battlefront 2. Now some of you might be watching this saying, Turkish Delight has lost his damn mind. Zombies aren't canon in Star Wars, and Battlefront 2 only deals with what's part of the official canon. Well, that is where you would be wrong, would be viewer. The popular mobile game Star Wars Commander, which I will be making several videos on here shortly, is in fact a part of the official Disney canon, and is where we see the scenario I explained a moment ago play out. The mission against the Blackwing virus and the undead troopers was a fun side quest sort of deal in Star Wars Commander, as it wasn't part of the main story, but that still makes it a part of the official Disney canon, and definitely a good piece of lore for future content in Battlefront 2 if the developers ever choose to go down that road. I'm not the first one to bring this up though, and there was talk and speculation before Battlefront 2's release that there may be a zombies type mode included in the game or in future DLC. Project Blackwing was the obvious topic of interest, and I figured in honor of Halloween this year, we should revive the conversation and hopefully get this on DICE's radar, because I know I can't be the only person who thinks this is a good idea. Let's talk about some benefits that would come with an offline zombies mode. First, and most importantly, introducing an Army of the Dead mode in Arcade would increase the life of Battlefront 2 fivefold, I think. Anything that brings more variety to Arcade is a bonus, but an entirely new mode, one where you could also team up with friends like in Classic Zombies, would keep the Battlefront 2 disc in players' consoles for many years to come. Think about the classic Battlefront 2. Why are people able to play it even still to this day, almost 20 years later? It's because the offline content was so vast and so enjoyable, to the point that it is still up to standard even today in terms of gameplay, and there is enough of it to keep the game fresh for all players. Of course, the classic has the benefit of mods that are being made and added even still today, but even the base game has enough offline content to keep you occupied for several days of steady gaming. Not to mention, the AI actually had half a brain, but that's a discussion for another video. Another reason I think zombies would work well in Battlefront 2 is because of a mode that already exists that even looks like it could be a good precursor to Battlefront 2 zombies. 
Ewok Hunt, in all its dark glory, seriously captures the essence of a spooky night on Endor, trying not to die at the hands of killer teddy bears. If DICE can achieve that level of anxiety with Ewoks by forcing you into first person and killing almost all the lights, they certainly can do it by throwing some troopers infected by the sickness at you. I would love this mode, and I can see it play out very similarly to classic zombies from Call of Duty, with wave after wave coming at you. I can even see several variations of this mode in Arcade, where you could either do a timed survival challenge or just see how many waves you can beat. There are a lot of possibilities, and I think it would be a huge missed opportunity for DICE to not add an Army of the Dead mode. One last reason why this mode would be incredible in Battlefront 2 is because it would bring Star Wars Commander even closer to the rest of the canon media. Commander is canon, yes, but that doesn't mean it's a necessarily well-known game, nor is it one that is widely played anymore. The game came out in 2014, and I am just now getting around to playing it and experiencing the story for myself. The player base has, naturally, dropped over the years, which is actually good for newcomers like me, because there isn't much active competition on the game, so you are able to progress fairly quickly. Including a mode in Battlefront 2 inspired by a storyline in Commander helps tie in multiple sources of canon media. In the same way, Luke's compass from Battlefront 2 was shown in The Last Jedi. It's just a cool nod that acknowledges other events and solidifies them in the canon. Now, unfortunately, despite all the good that would come from the addition of this, there is a serious problem within the gaming industry that throws a wrench in this Zombies Mode idea. Game publishers are not in the business of making games that last. Not anymore. It is far more profitable to take the assets from past games, repurpose and repackage them, and then give them to the player in the form of the current year's version of the game that they can then sell for full price. We see this most often with sports games, such as the FIFA series, but the principle can apply to most other games. Why would a publisher spend time and resources making something that they can only sell once and have it last for many years, when they can keep making new stuff and keep making a profit every year? It's the same logic behind EA saying last year that players are not interested in single-player, story-driven games anymore. As demonstrated by God of War and Spider-Man, that is simply not the case. We love our story-driven games, but EA would definitely have you believe that we don't, because it isn't in their best interest to make those games. A mode like Zombies is a mode that would be there to help make the game last. That's not something EA would prefer if they can sell you Battlefront 3 in the future. But honestly, after this game's launch, I really don't think they need to ever worry about a Battlefront 3, but that's just my opinion. So now, I'll pass this conversation off to you in the comments section. Do you think a Zombies mode would work in Battlefront 2? And if so, how would you like to see it played out? Personally, I would love to see the scenario on Dandoran play out, as it's another possible new planet location, but a continuation of the story from Commander would also be really cool, where maybe we find the base of one of the cartels that stole the virus samples, only to find everyone infected, and we have to contain the sickness before it spreads. They could do some really fun and unique things with this, and I have a suspicion it would attract a lot of Call of Duty players who maybe passed up on Battlefront 2 at launch. Besides the problem I mentioned before, I think it's a good idea, and I know DICE at least has the player's best interests in mind, so if anyone should be made aware of this idea, it should be them. Drop a comment and let me know if you support this, and also, if you're active on social medias, I would appreciate it a great deal if you could share this video around in hopes of getting some more attention. Yes, the views are nice, but I'm more interested in actually making this happen in Battlefront 2, and I would appreciate any and all help. Thank you so much for stopping by the bazaar. If you're a new viewer, consider becoming a subscriber, and if you liked today's video, smash that thumbs up button for me, and feel free to check out more videos. This has been your boy, Turkish Delight, and I will see you all out on the battlefront. Peace. From Tatooine to Mustafa, the best of the Yadarim, it's the one and only Star Bazaar, yeah.